Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to talk all about Tier 2 Goliath because I think he's a hero that's going to surprise you guys, and he's quite useful, uh, especially in a meta that is leaning more towards combat and physical types than ever before, I would imagine, because we have a lot of characters at the top of the best characters in the game who benefit from his leadership. So I'll do a really quick uh, assessment of his gears and my setup for the character at tier 2. I'll give you some advice and then we're going to jump into some comparisons so you can get a better idea of where his power level uh, lands compared to other heroes and existing heroes that you've probably had on your roster for longer and then we'll finish off with some challenging content. So my build for Goliath is almost entirely offensive. I went ahead and gave him a 200% damage proc with a max HP. The max HP is just there to provide him with some survivability, but it's primarily on that 200 proc. Of course, the poison damage does nothing, but we can't have perfect obelisks for every character. His ISO 8 set is Overdrive. Overdrive is definitely the ideal set because he gives himself an attack speed buff. But if you can't get Overdrive, you can settle for Power of Angry Hulk or uh, Hawk's Eye. In the case of Hawk's Eye, I believe that he does have skill cooldown on his uh, third gear there. It is a secondary stat, so it doesn't get as high of a number as the crit damage. As you can see, it's about half as much, but it's still some. So you may find yourself overcapped on skill cooldown if you have both his gear at 20 and Hawk's Eye, but you might not, and in this case, I guess I could reroll skill cooldown and go for Hawk's Eye. Hawk's Eye is actually not a bad set because it gives you uh, an HP uh, Uru, or HP ISO, and it also gives you the dodge, and that does buff his survivability, but it's a bit more of a defensive build than offensive. Uh, in case of the uh, Uru, I went with more offensive stuff. I used the uh, Ignore Defense there, the purples, to cap his Ignore Defense, but otherwise it's all attack with the physical attack and the crit damage and you've got a couple of open slots there with the uh, defense that I'm gonna put in something later uh, so with this build with this very offensive build he's still rocking 30,000 HP which is a lot for just one HP focused uh, item on his you know character which is the obelisk no Uru and nothing else for HP uh, and he's got 21,500 physical tech that is with his leadership so keep in mind if I were to switch this out and go over to the character uh, normally he would only have 16,900 so almost 17,000 physical tech so don't be uh, confused he's not you know rocking native tier 2 level stats without a, without a leadership as far as the rest of his stats go he's got 115 attack speed he's got respectable crit rate and crit damage although I would have preferred that to be higher if it had been on his obelisk and then he's got capped ignore defense and uh, cooldown now the big challenge with Goliath is definitely the survivability he has a couple of brief iframes I believe on one and three but they're very short uh, and his buffs don't give him enough defensive uh, kind of strength to uh, endure attacks he does have 30 percent uh, decreased damage received but it still doesn't keep him alive because he only has the four seconds of invincibility on his fifth skill because of that I do think that most of you would probably benefit from a defensive build for Goliath so I will say this despite the fact that I built him offensively I think you're better off building him defensively the reasons why I built him offensively is because one I don't play Alliance Conquest because it's a doo-doo game mode uh, and so I don't need any other kind of defensive characters like that uh, and I just want to smash with uh, Goliath in stuff like Shadowland and he's perfect for that because he buffs himself even more with his own leadership so I can just go in and solo with Bill's will and just hammer my opponents into the ground and that's what I want him for so that's how I built him but I think the best Goliath or the most useful Goliath overall would prioritize defense first would build stuff with max HP and perhaps dodge you don't have to worry about guard break immunity but you could also build that to complement his super armor uh, and I would probably go with a CTP of refinement or possibly a CTP of authority uh, to kind of try and you know balance things out however because I built my Goliath to smash I'm now going to give you guys some pretty awesome comparisons against Frank Castle's Punisher which is a pretty uh, offensively minded character uh, in in Punisher's case he doesn't have oh actually he does I gave him a 200% damage proc I forgot about this he has a matching 200% damage proc he's got a heroic uniform and he's got Power of Angry Hulk with offensive Uru as well so he's very similar in stats to 
uh, Goliath. If we go to the details page, it's very, it's almost identical in crit rate and crit damage. I actually made sure on the live streams that they were identical. He has a higher attack speed, but the buffs will change that once we get into the fight with uh, Goliath. And then he's got capped out ignore defense and cooldown. He's got some ignore dodge as well from his tier 2 uh, passive, which gives him 35%. Right now, because he's using Goliath's leadership, he's got 23,300 physical attack, which is more than Goliath. So for these tests, for these comparisons, Goliath will use his own leadership, which is 21.5, and Punisher will use his own leadership, which also makes him close to 21.5, 21.29. So very, very close in stats, almost identical physical attack, and essentially identical obelisk crit rate and crit damage. Uh, up against him is going to be the Stage 30 Shadowland boss, Daredevil, which is pretty exciting. Now, in Bill's case, he doesn't have any ignore dodge, so it's not very fair to put him with uh, a character that has a lot of guaranteed dodge in uh, Tier 2 Daredevil. So we're going to be adding uh, Ancient One. Ancient One's going to provide 25% ignore dodge, which is not the 35% that uh, Punisher gets, but it's as close as we could get. I didn't want to give Bill an unfair advantage, so he has a bit of a disadvantage, so to speak. But he has a little bit more physical attack. So I think it evens out. So we're basically just going to see how much damage I can do in one minute. It's going to take more than one minute to kill uh, Daredevil here. So we don't want to get stunned. We're going to add uh, basically a few seconds here to the clock just to make it fair. We're going to go to one minute, 57 seconds because I got stunned at the beginning of the fight. Uh, but we're just going to see which character can do more damage uh, in the time frame. And wow, my damage proc has not activated this entire time, which is... Uh, hard to believe, but I got stunned again. Wow, this is probably the worst run possible for uh, Goliath. And you're going to see that he still pumps out very respectable damage. And he's able to somewhat knock... or not, Wow, stunned again. Three stuns in a row. I might actually die. This is pretty embarrassing. I've never been stunned this many times. And I did probably a dozen tests uh, or more with uh, Goliath against a Daredevil. As far as a rotation go, I think that the best thing to do is to try to open up with the second skill to get the buff uh, and then lead immediately into the five. After two and five, I think it really depends what kind of uh, setup you have against your enemy in terms of, uh, you know, what they're doing. The four can give you some uh, defense down. We're going to stop it right there. We're a little bit off because I did get stunned three times, which was a total of nine seconds lost. Uh, so we did about 2.5 million damage in that time. And uh, yeah, that was pretty frustrating that we got stunned. I think he can actually go quite a bit lower than that. I think I, my best was 800,000 damage, 800,000 health left, which is you know 2.7 million instead of 2.5 uh, if I don't get stunned, which is pretty impressive for the one minute mark for him. Now we're going to test out Punisher. In Punisher's case, we don't want him to uh, have any strikers or any additional buffs, but we are going to bring in Destroyer so he has the same 3% all attack bonus because we don't want it to be too unfair or kind of skewed in the direction of Punisher or in the direction of Goliath. Uh, but he does have 10% more... Um, he does have 10% more uh, ignore dodge, so there is that. Uh, the thing that I find with Punisher that makes him possibly less uh, appealing than we might all think is that he actually doesn't have any skills that hit very hard. And I kind of discovered this while I was testing him out against Goliath. Despite the fact that I tried to trigger his damage proc, and I did so successfully on his fifth skill, I'm not doing it right now, but I did in various tests, the damage was never that impressive. And it was a bit bizarre to me uh, because I thought, you know, Punisher deals a lot of damage, and I guess he does, but it's just once you start to compare it to other characters, it doesn't seem as much uh, by comparison. I think his AoE damage is good, but that doesn't say anything, or that doesn't take away anything from Goliath, because Goliath has good AoE damage as well. Uh, but it's just surprising to me that even with a 200% damage proc, even with uh, Daredevil basically being unable to do anything, I can barely keep up with... Um, and you can see there, I can barely keep up with Goliath. In this case, with basic, basically identical stats, I'm left uh, a short. I'm left short about 115 thousand damage and it could be more uh if if daredevil had just moved around a little bit if i had missed a few of more of my attacks and keep in mind that's with 10 percent more ignore dodge so it seems to me that goliath is at least five to ten percent stronger in terms of damage than punisher which is very impressive 
Now, this doesn't obviously uh, take anything else into comparison. There's, of course, the survivability, which Goliath is much worse off than Punisher because Punisher has two iframes and an eight guard hit. So I cannot def uh, refute that at all. And I will say that trying to do something like what I'm about to do with Goliath is not a really great idea because it's very difficult and you can just die instantly. But if you want to, it's hilarious. And what we're basically going to do is stage 20 Proxima. We're going to load it up with Shuri and Groot. Groot's going to be there for the heal. We are going to use Strikers. We're going to use Captain America, Anti-Venom. We're not going to use Scarlet. Uh, and we're going to use Angel, Luna, and actually we're not going to use Luna. I don't want to use anyone that's going to um, stop Proxima for a very long time. So the last two people we're going to use are, let's just go Blue Marvel and Ironheart. It doesn't really matter. You know what? Let's bring Punisher in. We just need the heal and we need damage. And I want to see how much damage uh, and how far I can go with this Goliath. And this is going to be able to illustrate not only his, his damage potential, but his uh, rotation, his skill rotation, and his um, survivability. And the survivability is probably the worst part. But, you know, we're going to have to rely mostly on the luck of a couple of iframes and uh, the timing of his fifth skill because that's really where uh, I'm going to die. If, if she shotguns me, like, with that skill, it's basically, yeah, it's, it's over for me big time. But if she doesn't and I can get enough hits in, I can do some really nice damage. Probably should have dodged that one. There we go. He crits really nicely. This is going to hurt if I don't get out of the way. No, please stop it. Gotta mash buns like a madman when it comes to that particular skill. Okay, we need uh, those heals. This is tough. But you can see his damage is definitely not a joke. He hits really hard. And he has a lot of range on his fifth skill, so even though you're not very close to the enemy, you can really smash. Okay, great. We're into the next phase. Stage 20. Proxima with, you know, not, nothing kind of insane as far as strikers go. Captain America, oh, I had to switch there. Sorry, I didn't really want to switch. Uh, I'm not going to drop heals for uh, Goliath because it's just kind of cheating. Uh, actually, you know what? I will I will drop heals for Goliath. I changed my mind. If she's going to use the purple spheres, I think I got debuffed too. If she's going to use the purple spheres, I'm going to I'm going to heal. Purple spheres? You guys know what I mean, right? And Anti-Venom is the real MVP here. But yeah. Oh, I thought it was the purple thing again. Look at all these heals. And I mean, this could this could basically illustrate that anyone can beat Stage 20 Proxima. Not anyone, of course. You still need to have the damage for it. But of course, uh, I'm masking the lack of survivability that, that uh, Goliath has by using these strikers, by using these team-ups. And the 35% uh, damage reduction from supervillains that uh, Shuri gives him is, I think, I believe it's stacking, or at least it's adding. I keep getting stunned by that. But it's adding up with his 30% uh, damage reduction. So he's got possibly a 65% damage reduction from Proxima, which is uh, definitely making it harder for her to kill. Oh, he's dead. So that was pretty good. That was not bad. That's almost, I got a little bit further in testing by myself, but... Damn, Goliath. He hits really hard uh, if you build him to hit hard. But I think if you want to get the most out of the character and if you want him to be just balanced overall and not die in a couple of hits in certain situations, build him defensively. But that is my take, my review, my gameplay, and my guide for Goliath. Let me know what you guys think of him tier 2. Let me know what you have for the Deadpool update in terms of hype. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content and you want to support me. Hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.